Today we're studying section 2.5. Section 2.5 is about the matrix equation AX equals B. Now if you remember from section 2.4, we just did AX equals B. The difference is, now you're going to be looking at capital X and capital B. All this is referring to is rather than just having A being a matrix and X being a vector and B being a vector, X is now going to be a whole matrix, and B also is going to be a whole matrix. Okay, so the difference is we were doing A little x equals little b. A was a matrix. X and B were both just vectors. For the matrix equation, A capital X equals capital B. A is the m by n matrix of coefficients, just like it was before. X now, though, is a matrix of solutions, not just a vector of unknowns, but it's a matrix now. B is the M by Q matrix of constants. So rather than just having a single vector of constants, I'm actually going to be simultaneously solving several systems of equations. Lots of S's there. Okay, before we get into how to work with AX equals B, let's talk about column form of a matrix. It's a pretty simple idea, but it's a little bit strange. So I want to spend a little bit of time on it. A is equal to A sub 1, A sub 2, A sub 3, etc., up to A sub N. Now you notice that those are capital A's. What that's referring to is the single columns of A. So each column of A has its own name, A sub 1 being the first column, A sub 2 is the second, A sub 3, etc. Unless that's specified otherwise, you assume that that's the order that they're in. Let me show you an example, and that should become a little more clear. Let's take A sub 1 equal to 1, 2, 3, A sub 2 equal to 4, 5, 6, and A sub 3 equal to 7, 8, 9. My instructions just say display the matrix A. Okay, since it doesn't specify otherwise, I can just assume that they're in order A1, A2, A3, so that the matrix A is just equal to first column 1, 2, 3, second column 4, 5, 6, and third column 7, 8, 9. Okay, now if it were to tell me something different for the arrangement of the columns, for example, here we have A is equal to A sub 3, A sub 2, A sub 2. Well, that means that I need to make the first column the A sub 3 vector, which was 7, 8, 9. The second column and the third column are both the 4, 5, 6, which was A sub 2. So like I said, not too difficult, just a little bit strange. Let's look at another. Here we want to display the matrix A is equal to A sub 1 minus A sub 2, comma, A sub 3. Anytime that you have more than one column, it's going to be separated by commas. So in that first column, I have an expression, A1 minus A2, but that's just the first column. The second column is A sub 3. So there are only two columns in this matrix A now. All right, so first I should work out what A1 minus A2 is. So A1 was 1, 2, 3. A2 was 4, 5, 6. Subtract those. I'm getting negative 3, negative 3, negative 3. So that's going to be my first column now of the matrix A. So matrix A is going to be negative 3, negative 3, negative 3 in the first column. Then we said the second column is A sub 3. And A sub 3 was 7, 8, 9. Okay, now we have a theorem. Let A be an M by N matrix and B be an N by P matrix such that B is equal to B1, B2, etc., up to BP. Then in column form, A times B is equal to A times B1, A times B2, etc., up to A times BP. What this is telling me, even though it seems, like I said, a little bit weird, is that instead of multiplying matrix A times matrix B like we're used to doing, I could multiply matrix A times the first column of B, and that's going to give me the first column of the product. 
then A times the second column of B, which gives me the second column of the product, etc., up to the last column. I can multiply A times the last column of B, that would give me the last column of the product, AB. I tried to come up with a good example for this. If A is the matrix 1, 2, 3, 4, and B is in order B1, B2, B3, where B1 is 0, 3, B2 is 1, 1, and B3 is negative 1, 2. What we want to do is find AB, the product, two different ways. Okay, so I'm given A, I'm given the columns of B, and I'm asked to find A times B. Okay, so what that last theorem told me I can do is rather than multiplying the whole matrix A times the whole matrix B, I can do A times the first column, A times the second column, A times the third column. Let's look. A times the first column would be A, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, times the column 0, 3. A times B2 would be A, which is 1, 2, 3, 4, times the column 1, 1. And A times B3 would be 1, 2, 3, 4, times the column negative 1, 2. If I work each of those out, the first one I get 6, 12, second I get 3, 7, and the third I get 3, 5. Those are the individual columns now of my matrix AB. So putting that all together, AB is going to be first column 6, 12, second column 3, 7, third column 3, 5. Now that might seem a little bit silly to you because the second way you could have done that was just to multiply the matrix A times the matrix B and you would have gotten the exact same thing. So it's not going to seem really useful to you quite yet, but you'll see in the second part uh, why we're learning this. Okay, that concludes the first part of 2.5. There's actually a second part of 2.5 where we talk about the matrix equation AX equal to B, and we'll solve some equations, um, solve some systems equations using that. So, so far you've seen how to work with um, the column form of a matrix, what it means, how you can multiply A times B using the columns of B instead of just the old way, A times B. So make sure you watch the second part and then try some of the homework problems and do the practice quiz a few times and you should be fine on section 2.5.